Kevin Guthrie. I am based out of Atlanta, working for cross-functionally for the Pingora team and the Speed team. I'm a principal software senior, no, principal system software engineer at Cloudflare. So I'm here to talk about a blog post I wrote a few, I mean, I, it only got published a couple days ago, but I wrote it several months ago called Performance Measurements and the People Who Love Them. And this is a blog where I talk about the company slash my experiences trying to make performance measurements more uniform across the company and ex outside of the company and make them more useful and approachable to Cloudflare employees, customers, uh, people, people all over the place. Performance measurements is one of those things that I've been interested in for a long time. And I got approached by some teams at Cloudflare that were helping customers measure their own latency and understand uh, the latency measurements that they were seeing and like how it reflected on Cloudflare. Like was Cloudflare good, Cloudflare bad? How do you measure these things and communicate them in a concise and consistent way? So the blog post starts by going through some definitions saying, okay, if you're talking about latency, you need to be able to talk about things that have actual definitions. Latency has a sort of vague definition of something starts and then it ends and that's that's the latency. When you're talking about web latency, it gets a little bit more complicated because there are inherently two different pictures of latency, the server side, the client side. So you have to say, okay, I am interested in the latency from the client side because the clients are the people who care about the latency that they're seeing. We, Cloudflare on the server side, can measure latency internally, but we don't have a full picture as to what a client is, uh, what a customer, what an eyeball is seeing when they are using a Cloudflare site, Cloudflare Zone. So we set up definitions based on a company called Catchpoints, mostly public information about how they define their measurements. And we decided to use the same ones because a lot of our customers are already using Catchpoint and familiar with their fairly simple and fairly ubiquitous measurements. Like uh, they have a definition of time to first byte. Everyone, everyone has heard of time to first byte, but there are so many definitions for it, it sort of becomes useless. So we set out, when we say time to first byte, this is the exact thing that we mean. It's not a time, it's not a start and end time. It is a sum of times for important steps in an HTTP process. So once we have a coherent set of terms to talk about latency, we can then move on to how do you visualize it? Do you look at uh, the, the median, the mean? Do you look at the P75, P99? There are so many things you can look at because inherently you are looking at a statistical sampling of data. When you collect the sort of metrics, you're collecting so much that you can't look at all of it. You have to decide what aggregation, what type of what time of type of statistical representation you want to use. So you have to know which one is important. So what we did was, well, maybe we don't want to decide which one is important. Maybe we want to look at the entire thing. So the last part of the blog post is going through how do you visualize an entire spectrum of percentiles, specifically when you want to compare latencies of two different systems. In a lot of cases, it's, it's the two different systems are Cloudflare as a system, Cloudflare as a DNS for a certain zone versus a different CDN for a specific zone. Looking at the entire spectrum allows you to say, for this percentile range, Cloudflare is faster. For a different percentile range, the other CDN is faster. Then you have to decide, okay, which of those percentile ranges matter the most? So finally, we get into our the build uh, discussion of probability, where we talk about how if you have a website that makes multiple, multiple requests, sometimes multiple hundred requests, which, how does the, how do those multiple requests, the, the giant set of requests, affect what the user experiences in terms of latency. And as you might guess, if you're issuing multiple requests, you need a significant portion of those requests to finish before you consider the page loaded, before you can consider the content successfully delivered. This is a lot of the idea behind uh, most contentful paint, whatever the whatever the, uh, the actual acronym is for that. But doing it based on the metrics for an individual request, you can get an estimation for a user's latency given their number of requests. And after you go through all of the math to um, see to see what the impact on user latency is for a certain request latency distribution, you see that the percentile you need to look at for a request latency is very high. So for something like cloudflare.com, which does 70 requests every time you go to the Cloudflare homepage, the 99th percentile latency for a request is what is representative of a user's latency. For something like Amazon, which does 400-ish requests every time you go to amazon.com,
from. It's the 99th percentile of that ninth percentile latency for a single request that is representative of a user's latency. And that's sort of the bottom line. I mean, I guess the real bottom line is we have some tools that we are going to be releasing eventually uh, so that customers can do this, do this sort of analysis and see these sort of results. But that, that part is a work in progress. And that's why we say it's coming soon. Um, once you have a handle on the statistics and the, the math to back it up, you can get a lot of powerful information out of, out of a simple data set, like we are just using individual request timing, but with uh, some probability analysis and statistics, you're able to get a much more powerful set of tools from just this simple data set. This is the sort of information you would get from like repeated browser tests or real user measurement. Those two things are important, but they're hard to do on a really rapid basis. Request testing, you can do very quickly and in a very well automated way. And being able to get that sort of aggregate data from individual requests is a powerful way to use statistics and software. So you can look forward to seeing these tools and doing this sort of analysis yourself uh, in, the, in 2025.